Hello, good afternoon from sunny Cambridge. So it's been a while since I talked to you guys or did any videos on creating anything. Um, I've been busy, I've been doing various uh, things. But uh, one of the things I wanted to show you is the, the game I'm making. So this game I created, it is a tank game. So you can run around the camp uh, in the tank and shoot other tanks. <laughs> and uh, there are a few bits that I can uh, talk about. So uh, in the coming weeks, I will take apart various different aspects of the, the game uh, and show you how to uh, create those things. So today, don't go away yet. Today, I'm going to show you how to create terrain objects uh, such as uh, lakes, mountains and things like that. Uh, this is a simple, uh, very quick uh, video. Uh, hope you enjoy. Thank you. Hello. So this is an experiment to see if we can draw uh, terrain objects like lakes and mountains and forests. So we start with this, um, uh, the attempt to draw a lake, but I thought this would be a good application of uh, creating a small fractal. So let's take a look at what we have here. Uh, a simple class uh, with some uh, initialization and the work or the creation of or generation of the fractal happens in this class over here, uh, this function over here. So uh, it gets a position, a radius and a list of terrain objects um, and then does some bits uh, and then uh, calls itself and here's the exit condition um, so we are sending in this is the call site we're sending in uh, an initial position of 300 by 300 uh, and a radius of uh, 50 and an empty uh, array of terrain objects so let's see by controlling the uh, the exit condition we can go deeper and deeper into the fractal so since we are uh, sending in 50 as a radius what this does is it creates a main object which is a ter terrain object uh, using the, the position radius and the color uh, adds it to the the list that we are uh, we have passed in and then it creates um, a number of secondary objects around the parameter so over here uh, let me show it first then it will be easier to understand right now it is 40 let's go down to something like 20 um, and this is the, the secondary objects that we have created so uh, a random number between 5 and 10 and we create that many number of uh, secondary objects around the perimeter so how do we do that uh, we create a random angle between 0 and 360 and also uh, this is set inside or set to uh, polar coordinates or converted to a polar coordinates so uh, polar coordinates is a way of um, uh, representing coordinates using an angle and a radius so the angle we generated is the uh, random angle uh, between 0 and 360 and radius is the the radius that we are passed we have uh, that was passed in so basically um, uh so what we are doing is that we are looking for a for an angle like that from the center of the current main object and creating uh, uh, polar coordinates on the parameter so from here from there 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 and like that um, and then convert that 
polar coordinates to um, the 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 Cartesian uh, representation and add the position that's because uh, this polar coordinate is is um, relative to the origin which is at the zero zero over here uh, so we have to move it to the position where the uh, the main object is so once we do that we we call generate again or oh, it's a recursive call and this time what we do is we reduce the the radius by half uh, and then call that again so what, when we do that we get a, a representation or a drawing like this so if we go further down let's say something like uh, 10 then we should see three stages of or three uh, three stages of uh, fractal so basically what happened here is that we have the main circle over here and the secondary circles over there and then each of the secondary circle will have circles around it so and so on so if we keep reducing this then we would see a fractal like this um, so this is this doesn't really look like a, a lake so but it would be if we paint it properly so let's do that now that looks somewhat like uh, a lake from when you look from above uh, one more one more and so on so if we keep reducing this to let's say we would get more and more i think realistic looking uh, legs can go down to one yeah they look quite like legs the what you have to understand here is that the number of objects that you would create so the number of circles that we create is 20,689 here uh, so this affect the the game you're creating if you are uh, uh, how you represent a lake because uh, if you represent them as a bunch of circles then there are so many circles like this uh, perhaps somewhat like five would give you 483 and still vaguely looks like a, uh, a lake okay so that's the experiment on generatively creating lake like 2d uh, 2d lakes all right thank you